On this episode of Salt Lake Insider, we're downtown with Vive Juicery. On this episode... Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Salt Lake Insider episode number eight. I'm downtown today at Beeb Juicery on about 2nd East and Broadway, and I'm sitting here with Brittany, the founder of Beeb Juicery. And I'm excited to hear your story because yeah. I've seen your juice for years. Yeah. And, and I've always, and to be honest, I haven't tried it yet. Well, we're gonna change that today. We're gonna have to. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and that's actually why I'm doing the show is just to get some free juice. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. No, but I, and you guys have an awesome social media presence and so I'm really excited to hear your, just your story and what you guys are all about and yeah. why you're so popular. Great, awesome. Yeah, so t- tell us how you got started, you know, what is Vive Juice? Yeah, totally. And, and why is it so popular? Okay, awesome. So, um, Vive was born from the idea that like fresh, local food didn't have to be this like inaccessible idea like I grew up eating really terribly I grew up on like frozen pizzas hamburger helper like when I moved out I had to teach myself how to boil water and cook and so (laughs) I really like did a full 180 and um in my early 20s I experimented with a lot of different eating styles I went raw I was vegan I was vegetarian I did the opposite and did paleo and sure. um, really the thing that stuck was juice I loved the way I felt when I was drinking it yeah. and um, so that was like one side of it then I always knew I wanted to own my own business but I didn't quite know what it would be I thought it was going to be like a coffee shop or a cafe of some sort but yeah. I'm really competitive and I like to be the best at whatever it is I do right. and I was like there's way too much coffee in Salt Lake for me to be able to like be a shining star here so right. kind of left it on the back burner and just always knew that there was something I wanted to do. So you thought food. about a coffee shop at some point? Yeah place. I did okay. yeah and um, after a trip to San Francisco in early 2013 there were juice bars everywhere and I was like whoa it's yeah. not coffee I'm meant to do it's juice and so nice. I like, came home started doing all this research on the industry and was like, all right, I really just got to like focus for the next year, save up some money, create a business plan, all this kind of thing. But I was 23 years old. All of that stuff was not interesting to me. Right. And so I was And not get, natural either. Yeah, right? no. And I mean, like, I quit college on the first day. So it's like, I didn't have any business school experience. I didn't know right. the first place to start. And so I took it to Kickstarter and wanted to see if this is something the community wanted. And so I actually started Eve as a like pre-order juice delivery company. So people would hop online, order the juice that they wanted, and then I would make it like fresh early in the morning, it's like 3 a.m. and then I would get everything delivered wow. out on a little Vespa at like 8 a.m. So and you were doing those deliveries yourself? Yeah, nice. I was doing everything. Nice. Um, yeah, it was a okay. lot of fun, but right. um, my biggest thing is, is I wanted to make a positive impact on the local agriculture community. Um, I remember walking into the farmer's market for the first time and being like, this is what food is supposed to be like and I wanted to be able to find a way to impact that so um, this idea of like this coffee shop feel but being able to do something that was fruit and vegetable based it kind of brought together all of these ideas into one so I knew that long term I wanted to get a location but I couldn't quite afford it up front so I just became this like delivered to your door thing and then over the next six months saved and saved and saved grew organically pushed social media like crazy and had enough money to open up our first location in Sugar House. And so that was, we opened the business in August of 2013 and um, opened Sugar House April of 2014. And then we just grew from there. Nice. So that's kind of the history. And you just, it, and so you have three locations now, yeah, right? Yep. So we're the downtown one. Yep. And you have one in Draper? Uh-huh, yep. One in South Draper. It's off of 138th and Bangor on the east side of the freeway. And okay. the state parking lot is the Harmons. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And so that, the need for those other locations just grew out of demand? Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. That's a good and problem it was, to have. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And it was also like perfect time, perfect like introductions to people. I feel like so much of me like fell into my lap and it was just meeting the right people sure. and that's something I really love about Salt Lake City is we have a really strong community in the local business world especially in the local foodie world is that we're all supporting each other and so it's making introductions all the time and finding out about the little things 
and so all of our locations just came about perfectly. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So Brittany, you mentioned Salt Lake has an awesome community. Um, I grew up here. Yeah. I think you did too, yeah, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I think it's really cool that we've just kind of lucked out into this amazing city that's growing like crazy. There's totally. people flocking to Salt Lake because I'm in real estate and it's, you know, yeah. there's so many people coming here. It's wild. Totally. Um, do you feel like Salt Lake is a good place to do business? And, yeah. And tell us more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually love being in Salt Lake City because I feel nice. like I can be. I would rather be a big fish in a small pond than a got me in the ocean. Yep. And I think that Salt Lake is this like perfect blend where you can be vocal, but you can have a really big presence and a really big impact on the community. And the growth has actually been really cool because we're getting a lot of transplants from like California and Washington and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. But in the like, especially in the local food world, they're really conscious about what they're putting into their bodies. And so I think that the Salt Lake City food scene and things like cold pressed juice and things like acai bowls or things that are um, farm to table are a really, it's a really powerful movement and we're getting sure. the right people in that those communities are only building and building and building. And it's like, whenever I think that like everybody knows about, about beef, it's like, no, there's so many more and there's so many more. It's right. awesome. It just keeps growing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a big city and I didn't really yeah. fully understand how big Salt Lake was until I got into the real estate business. Totally. Because I grew up in Holiday and I kind of, you know, anything west of State Street was the west side. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's <laughs> not the the anymore. It's not, no. Yeah, totally. You go down into Draper, you go mm -hmm. down into, you know, Harriman, and, and even like far west Jordan. It's just such a big valley. Absolutely. And there's so so many people, so much opportunity. Yeah, I agree. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is really cool. So let's talk about these. So, yes. So me not being in totally. the juice business or anything, like yeah. whenever whenever I'm at the store and I see glass. Yeah. Like whether it's milk, like totally. Winter Dairy does it with yeah. milk, right? Mm -hmm. I I instantly think subconsciously that it's a more premium thing. Like Absolutely. just the fact that it's a glass bottle totally. impresses me. Maybe that's dumb, but it is what it is. Yeah, is, is that kind of why you guys are doing the totally. glass? So there definitely is something to that. So yeah. um, I'm gonna walk you a little bit through from like start to finish why the awesome. beef juice so tutorial. Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. So inside of this one bottle is anywhere between two and four pounds of produce and so wow. i know right yeah. so we use a juicing method called cold press what that means is we're using pressure rather than heat to extract the juice um, it's a, stu a two-step method it's much slower more refined than like what you could make at home and so right. the benefit to that is that you end up getting three to five times more nutrients and you have a shelf life up to five days depending on the recipe so okay. we are putting the best of the best inside this bottle and so i don't want to dumb it down with plastic right. and um like you know i always mention is that plastic is used everywhere and so much of it ends up in landfills and ends up in, in the ocean and i definitely don't want to contribute to that so right. we have a built-in bottle exchange program to help keep our glass bottles eco-friendly so you can actually enjoy your juice give it a rinse, bring it back, and then you get discounts on future juices. Cool. And so it's this whole full circle thing. Nice. Yeah, keeping it sustainable, I love keeping it. it glassy. How many different flavors do you have? Yeah, we have um, about 16 uh, different flavors, and then we also have a rotating seasonal menu that actually features like nice. local produce. And we always source all of our produce locally first, and what we can't get local, we get certified organic. Possible. So awesome. you're really getting the best of the best. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm curious because sure. you know this is more expensive than if you were to walk into any sure. store and pick up on totally. or or naked juice or something like that. Yeah. What's the big difference between your juice and Oddwalla and, yeah, and all of those? Yeah. Totally. Well, first things first. Oddwalla and naked are not juice. Um, and okay. the big thing is, is that most of the time they're simply they may they may have juice in it but they're also just blending up fruits and vegetables to be able to go in it, which is typically why it'll be thicker. Sure. Um, the reason why that makes a difference is that part of the benefit of juice is that the fiber is actually removed. And fiber is a really important part of your diet, yeah. but 
Um, the benefit with it being juice is that if you were to try to like eat a salad um, that contained two to four pounds of produce, your body wouldn't be able to digest all those nutrients. Right. By removing the fiber, That's you're a big able salad. exactly, <laughs> yeah. and um, to remove the fiber makes it so you're getting all of those nutrients from those two to four pounds of produce with little to no work on your body. So these drinks like Adwala and Naked and that sort of thing, they're also blending up um, their ingredients to be able to fill the bottle faster and, sure. you're, and you're getting less nutrients and your body has to work harder to digest it. Interesting. Secondly, any juice, whether it says cold pressed or not, anything that you can get in a grocery store has been processed in one of two ways. It's either been pasteurized, which is like what they do with milk, which means that it's been heat flashed, and so you're essentially killing all of the good stuff. Right. Don't drink grocery store juice. Okay. And yeah, because it has to sit on their shelf for however long. Exactly. Right? And uh, the other one is called HPP or high pressure pasteurization. So that's typically the one that you're going to see with juices that say cold pressed, even if they're in the grocery store. So your brands like Suja, um, no. Um, not so good? Yeah, no. The, um, essentially, HPP is a non-heat pasteurization. So what they do is they cold press the juice, they always bottle it into plastic, then they ship it out to a plant to then be put into, machine, into a machine that applies like 20,000 pounds of water pressure to neutralize the bad bacteria. There's a lot of conflicting evidence out there of whether or not that also gets rid of the good stuff. So, sure. But the benefit to HPP juice is it extends the shelf life to three weeks. But the way that I see it is that you don't want to be drinking three week old juice. Right. Like fruits and vegetables are not intended to last that long. Right. They're so meant to be fresh. They're meant to be fresh. So that's why our juices only have a shelf life of three to five days and we're only able to extend it that much because we don't use any key. It's just a two step process of grinding and then pressing the juice. So, um, the other part of it is that we don't add anything to our juice, so there's no added sugar, no preservatives, nothing of that sort, it's simply just fruits and vegetables, cool. and then we source... So whatever it says right here, that's the only that's it. thing that goes in it, and we source all of our produce locally first, and what we can't get local, we get certified organic whenever possible, and um, the biggest benefit to eating local is that your food is going to have more nutrients because it hasn't been on a truck getting shipped here so you're not right. working on that you're also reducing the carbon footprint of your food and then for everything that we're not able to get locally we actually partner with local distributors to get produce closest to us so the majority of organic produce comes from california so it's not traveling very far so everything nice. in here has been picked in the last week so you're getting optimal nutrients awesome Love it. Well, I didn't know any of that. It now was, you do. Yeah, I go to the store, I see the Bolt House Farms, I see the yeah. Osmala and stuff. It's yeah, like, oh, totally. It's, it looks healthy. Right, and it's like way cheaper, and yeah. there's a reason for it. So, there you, go. you get what you pay for. You do get what you pay for in yeah. many things. Yep, cool. exactly. Cool. All right, so you have. You have so many flavors. Yeah. Which one is your personal favorite? Yeah, my personal favorite is the Hero. It's pineapple, pear, grapefruit, chia seed, and coconut water. Wow. It's amazing. It's like one of the most refreshing blends. It's also great as like a pre or post workout. But the thing I really like about it is it's got this really like light, refreshing flavor, and I'll actually mix it with other juices yeah. and um, be able to kind of like customize it, which is a lot of fun, and we can do that in the store too. So how do you come up with all these flavors? Do you just kind of experiment and just say this, well, let's throw this in and see what, yeah, see what it tastes like? Yeah, so in the beginning, awesome. um, I pulled a lot from just like my personal arsenal of recipes. I had been juicing for a few years when yeah. um, I had gotten started. So I took my recipes and kind of refined them and brought in like slight adjustments to give it kind of that wow factor and that extra, um, just because a lot of juice companies would do like the same recipes and that's boring. Yeah. And so um, I also worked with a lot of nutritionists and making sure that our juices were actually good for you and that they would bring nutritional benefit um, beyond just tasting good. So yeah. um, it was a lot of experimentation and then adjusting quantities to make sure that you were getting therapeutic benefit from it as well. So Awesome. Yeah. And you guys have really caught on. I see your brand everywhere, all over social media. Totally. You know, when Thank I drive, you. of course. When I drive through Sugar House, I see that location. And, yeah. You know, um, what do you think makes you guys so popular? Like, what's been 
what's fueled your your success here yeah, in Salt Lake? Totally. I mean, really, I think that it all started with our Kickstarter. Um, getting the community involved in the creation of the business from the very beginning, I think, got people nice. excited about our story and that they saw that they were not just buying, you know, this nine dollar juice, but they were supporting the people behind it. That yeah. It, we really were able to create a movement around it and be able to get people behind the impact that we're making. Like we have um, like half dozen farm and garden partnerships that have been able to grow their operations because of the sheer amount of produce that we buy from them. Awesome. And um, I do a lot of like volunteer work with youth programs, both for like the business side as well as teaching about healthy food side. And, sure. um, We've really been able to give us a platform to be able to be that positive impact. And also, we just keep it real. Like, we have a lot of fun, and our customers become our friends. Yeah. And we don't get caught up in the, like, this is what you're supposed to do in business. And I think that people really appreciate that transparency and just that, like, I'm just going and, like, getting a juice with my friend. And, yeah. um, and it helps that it tastes good and it photographs well for Instagram. So, yeah. yeah. When I first walked in here, the first impression I got was that it's just laid back, it's not pretentious, it's totally. just, you know, it's a juice bar. Like, it, yeah. you can get some awesome juice and it's like, you know, it's just laid back. Totally. I think in the beginning, um, and this is something that unfortunately, like, the healthy food world always battles with, is that it can come across as really pretentious and um, that it's not for everybody. And I always make the joke that, like juice is not just for Whole Foods hippies or for the Gwyneth Paltrow's of the world that it really is for everybody because all it is is it's not magic it's just really good nutrition I mean yeah. like two to four pounds of produce in every bottle there's no way you're not going to feel good after drinking it. right so uh, my little boy my three-year-old loves green juice he asks for green juice all the time I so love it. it's a good way to sneak in the veggies for, yep. for the little ones yep absolutely and for us let's let's not lie let's right lie. exactly yeah. yeah sometimes we all need a little bit of a push to get those green things, yes so exactly yeah totally what's the craziest flavor you guys have done to whether it's seasonal or maybe one that you did back yeah. in the day that you don't mm, that's like the weirdest most strange mix ever yeah totally okay there was one that we um did this was way back when um we had this juice called kikama and it had jicama and raspberries and jalapeno and like a few different a few other root vegetables i can't even remember but i just remember it coming out like the brightest pink color and it was like this thing that yeah. you thought was going to be really sweet and lovely and then you took a sip of it and your mouth was like on fire sure. and that one did not last very long we had to like refine it and make it and make it like palatable but that was probably one of our most interesting like playful experiments that yeah. um, I'm not sure how well it went but as far as something that we kept on the menu um, we did a spicy beet juice once um, and it's actually coming back for the fall season and right. yep exactly inside information yeah, it's got some, um, it's got beets, it's got some citrus, like pineapple and lemon and lime, but then we kick it off with a little bit of jalapeno, and uh, it's called Dragon's Breath, and... I'm, I'm like, very excited to, yeah, to try this Yeah, it's actually stuff. awesome. I love spicy stuff. Oh, you're going to love it then. Awesome. Yeah, totally. And that, the jicama stuff, was it, what did you call it? Yeah, it's Hic called Kikama. Kikama. Because it was like Kikama with a kick. Right. So, yeah. The adventure in me make you know, I will Right. I'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting. Totally. I mean, like, if you really want just like a nice like kick of something, get a ginger shot and just shoot it. And trust me. So you guys do shots and stuff. It's yeah. not just yeah, bottles not, of juice, right? Yeah, it's not just bottles of juice. We do shots. We do elixirs. Um, shots are just little one ounce guys. They're not necessarily formulated for taste. They're just formulated for sure. benefit. Um, elixirs are little four ounce guys, so they're going to be super potent, but they are like specifically designed for a certain purpose. Like we have one that helps you fall asleep that has like lavender essential oil in it. We have another that helps you wake up in the morning and then one that um, helps with like skin and that sort of thing. So sure. it's awesome. Cool. I'm going to switch gears real quick and because you in four years, you've built yeah. this awesome local brand and Thank local you. company. There's a lot of people out there that want to start a business and they don't totally. even they don't even know what the first step is. Yeah. What 
you have any business advice for the yes. the entrepreneur out there who wants to get started? Yeah, absolutely. I think that the number one thing is figuring out your why, and um, because small business is hard. And I knew it was going to be hard, but I severely underestimated the like amount of work it was going to take, and not sure. just like time work, but also like the mental work you do and the emotional work that you do. I think that oftentimes when you're really passionate about something, you end up pouring a lot of yourself into the business. And so like when things aren't working or they are working, that can really have an impact on who you are as a person. And so I think it's about getting really clear on the why. So when you're in those moments of struggle, you're able to come back to something yeah. that it's like, okay, I'm going to push through this hard time because this is the this is the end goal, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, the rest of my advice is a little bit unorthodox, is I say like, forget all the rules. And nice. I think that that is really what um, helped me be successful, is that like, one, I was just young and naive and didn't really know any different, but I just took the approach of like, I don't know how people do this, so I'm just gonna figure it out as I go, and I'm not gonna let anything stop me. And um, it was about like getting creative and thinking outside the box. Is that by getting started on Kickstarter, I didn't have thousands of dollars of capital to pour into advertising, to pour into having like the best equipment right off the get go. But it forced me to be like a very dynamic like, problem solver. And I actually am um, really grateful that I didn't have the money because I think right. that it allowed me the opportunity to really like build it from the ground up and be able to really share that story and those triumphs with our customers and create a community around what we were doing. So like sure. forget the rules, like start from the end and then like work your way back and know that like it's never gonna be perfect and you're always gonna be working towards it. Right. And um, the other thing is to really invest in people. And so investing in Yourself, investing in your employees and your connections and like not always having an agenda of like why you're going out to these networking things right. and all of that. That's Don't about always be being real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just be a real human because I think that it's really built in for us all to help each other yeah. and um, that really comes out in the work that you do. It's it's cool that you that you mentioned just kind of throw out the rules yeah. and, and that not having a ton of money yeah. was actually a benefit. Totally. Um, nice little uh, plug here for one of our previous episodes. Yeah. So back on episode four, I interviewed Jake Lauser with the Main Street Entrepreneur, and he he and his father went on a bike tour across the country and interviewed a hundred entrepreneurs in a hundred days. And like Justin's nut butter, you know, we, yeah. we all see those little uh -huh. packets. Yeah, and they totally. interviewed them, and and one thing that all of these companies had in common is that they bootstrapped, they didn't have money, and they, they're they glad they didn't because it made them be more creative. Yep. It made them really think outside the box on how they can do things without a pile of cash. Yep. And you know you built something awesome by doing that same thing, so that's cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank that's you. episode four, so go watch episode four. Yeah. <laughs> cool, so let's switch gears yet again back to, back to the <laughs> juice. <laughs> Where do you guys produce all the juice. Do you do it here? Yeah, we actually don't do it in store. And the reason okay. for it is that cold press process is really slow, it's really loud. And when you gotcha. are dealing with like hundreds of pounds of produce a day, it smells kind of like a garden or right. like a kitchen. Very so Yes, it's very earthy. earthy. So our kitchen is actually in South Salt Lake and um, just off of 33rd. And so what the really cool thing about it is it started as almost like an empty garage space. Mm -hmm. And that whole no having capital thing, yep. we had to like build it out as we've grown and expanded. And it's like a 2,500 square foot warehouse. Nice. And in the beginning, we used maybe 400 square feet. And now we're using all of it. Cool. So your plans for the future. Yes. So are, are you going to be expanding in more locations? Are you going to be offering more things? What's what's the plan? Yeah. So um, I think we're going to hold off on more locations for now. But yeah. that is definitely in the future. Um, our big focus right now is being able to refine what we're doing. So we're really excited to be launching some new products cool. soon. Deep, not wide. Yep. I deep, like not wide. Exactly. We also want to set up our kitchen to be able to offer kitchen tours so people can actually come in and like oh, see cool. the process yeah. and be 
be able to see the kind of volume. I think that people think like, oh, it's just this little operation. And it's like, no, if we work in an eight person team and we're dealing with hundreds of pounds of produce. And so I think it'd be really cool for people to be able to see how their food is actually made. So yeah. really just getting tight knit into the, into the community and then launching some really fun products on the way and nice. expanding our subscription offerings, all sorts of really good stuff. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, these days there's so many, you've seen all those food uh -huh. documentaries on Netflix that just scare oh, yeah. the hell out of totally. you. It makes you not want to eat anything ever again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so being able to actually come in and see where the Absolutely. juice that people love is being produced, I think is a really cool thing. Yep, and I don't anticipate there ever being an anti-fruit and vegetable um, Netflix documentary coming right. out, so I think we're we're in good shape with juice. I, I nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> I know it's true. It's true. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. It, thanks for coming. It, it's it's before coming in and talking to you. Totally. I had this. I was like, how. How interesting could a juice company be? You know, yeah. like it's juice, and I knew that there was more to it than sure. that. Yeah, I knew it was totally. very high quality, but I didn't get it. And and so, thank you for enlightening me and enlightening Absolutely. people watching on what's going on behind the scenes and kind yeah. of why you're doing this. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, thanks for having me. You bet. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for watching Salt Lake Insider episode number eight. Have a good one.